Welcome back to this special episode of MindYour.biz. This is an update on the Ravencoin Network, a project that we've been following fairly closely since its initial mainnet launch two years ago. This is of a special concern to GPU miners because the Ravencoin Network has been so closely aligned with the concerns of GPU miners. They launched with a fair launch. They launched on a GPU mineable algorithm. And when accessibility by ASICs and FPGAs was discovered, by the Ravencoin lead developer team, they were very responsive and they forked away from the algorithm that they were using before, now in favor of CaPow, a tightly controlled variant of ProgPow. But we now discover there's been a, a long-term vulnerability. This was a long game. I call it a, a slow hack, right? Uh, air quotes. All this means is that the black hats that were interested in stealing Ravencoin funds they played a really long game here. They embedded code and then submitted it for with a pull request to the lead team. They embedded code into the core of Ravencoin in advance and planned their escape. It's really quite brilliant. So on the one hand, they discovered a new vulnerability, but on the other hand, it's just garden variety con artist work, obtaining the confidence of the community and then slipping malicious code into the core code base. There was an emergency update issued by Tron Black on Medium. I'm going to read snippets of it right now and kind of give you a flavor for what really happened. I used the uh, I used the the Black Hat Hacker Man uh, image for a reason. This was in part a confidence game, right? A con man hack, getting code inserted into the Ravencoin core code, uh, but then also it was propagated by the rest of the network. That's what makes it so insidious. Uh, but Tron writes that recently some community members from the CryptoScope team, if you check out their uh, Solus Explorer at rvn.cryptoscope.io, you see the links down in the description of this video, reached the Ravencoin team with the findings that Ravencoin blockchain has a vulnerability which was used by unknowns to mint Raven that goes beyond the coin base of 5,000 Raven, but it represented 44 days worth of additional coins minted. And he says, thanks to the Cryptoscope team that brought it to our attention and kudos to them for their technology for detecting the exploit. After identifying the vulnerability, Ravencoin development and Cryptoscope team coordinated to avoid the leakage of the possibility to exploit the vulnerability and Ravencoin development team Im immediately started code review to detect isolate and fix the issue. Now he doesn't say that this has been fixed yet, but they have begun work on isolating this problem. My heart goes out to the Ravencoin development team. Uh, I have met several of them in person and they are clearly a, a bunch of really honest, hardworking dudes that are trying to make one of the best, easiest to use asset issuance platforms ever to exist in the blockchain space. So I sincerely uh, wish them Godspeed in isolating this exploit and shutting it down. We'll see when that happens. Uh, hopefully there's a second announcement that that l confirms that this ha this exploit has been shut down. But he mentioned initially that the minting of Raven has gone beyond the base, the coin base of 5,000 Raven per block. That's the core problem is that there's been an additional mint of Raven coins, right? So uh, on the blockchain, he says the vulnerability does not impact Raven coin assets. So all asset balances are safe. As we're transitioning from the vulnerable code to fixed code, there may be some chain instability. Please keep transactions to a minimum until the chain is stabilized and miners are using the updated software. So hopefully exchanges are honoring the wishes of the core development team. And I'm just amplifying the signal here. You see a link to the original Medium article down below in the description of this video. But he says the open source and decentralized nature of this project prevents a quick and easy fix. And he's totally right. The uh, Ravencoin core wallet has been installed so many times and essentially a previous version of the wallet and a, a previous version of the chain will be run, or the blockchain will be run by so many full nodes that it's difficult to now correct course and propagate the correct version of the chain and deal with this, this over issuance problem, this, this extra minting problem. Uh, so, or essentially hidden inflation. We only develop source code. They don't operate the network to, to that point. The rest of us operate the network by running a full node in the desktop wallet. We're all a part of this fix. I will be downloading the latest binaries 
for Windows where I run a full node of Ravencoin. It's the only full node of Ravencoin that I run. It's one of those full node type deals for me. I want to know that assets that I've that I've uh, issued on Ravencoin that they're safe. So I run a full node. And he says it should only require updating your Raven D. For miners and exchanges, please update to the latest version through Ravencoin.org at Ravencoin.org slash wallet. Let's just take a, a quick look here live. So Ravencoin wallet. I'm going to drag this over. There we go. Desktop downloads. And let's check to see. Yeah, it is. A, it is a direct download right here. So it looks like it's version 4.2.0.0 for Windows, at least. Let's go ahead and check on Mac OS. Also, same version number. And then Linux should be same version number. So that's available directly on their website. Apparently they don't have links over to GitHub. I don't know if there's been any kind of a problem with having that spoofed in the past. Zellcore, I don't know if it's been affected just yet. Zellcore and the Zellcore team has worked very closely with Ravencoin to have full support, not only of the Ravencoin asset itself or the Ravencoin token or coin itself, but also assets issued on Ravencoin. They were the first wallet to support Ravencoin assets. So uh, I don't know what the state is right there of Zellcore. Uh, hopefully we'll have some kind of a statement from the Zellcore team. Dan, if you're watching or anybody else, uh, if you're if you're watching and can make an official statement on behalf of Zellcore with uh, with regards to this exploit, I'll, uh, I'll update that in the description of this article on mineyour.biz. And then of course, issue, uh, boost that signal on Twitter as well. So any other wallet providers of course that are supporting the asset the main asset of just raven coin um hopefully that's the case but as you notice right here going through the list zelcore the only ones with asset support now as mentioned in the article by tron black assets on raven coin have are not the main concern but a wallet like zelcore that supports assets issued on raven coin is sort of the go-to for folks like me as a multi-coin wallet that also supports the uh, the assets issued on Ravencoin. So hopefully Ravencoin itself and this uh, this problem that we're seeing, uh, hopefully it's not too greatly affected. Um, as mentioned before, uh, exchanges and miners that are running the full Ravencoin D, uh, download that directly from ravencoin.org. He says, what about everybody else? It's always wise to be on the newest Ravencoin version. That's true of any cryptocurrency. You always want to be running the latest version of the wallet or of the daemon, uh, the sync daemon for the blockchain issued by that team. Yes, it can be tedious if you have a lot of coins, if you're running a lot of different full nodes, especially. But that is the price of dangerous liberty within cryptocurrency. We have to have constant vigilance. If we don't take care of these assets and of these these coins, well, we are the only custodians. So <laughs> as uh, as members of the cryptocurrency community, it's incumbent on us to uh, to stay up to date. He mentions also that the extra Raven that was minted as part of this exploit represents approximately 1.5% of the final 21 billion. And the exact final number wasn't known as of the time of writing. He says another way to think about it is that it represents about 44 extra days worth of mining. Maybe the exploit lasted a much lower amount of time, but he says that's 44 days worth of mining. Imagine somebody gaining 100% of the hash rate and gaining the full block reward for 44 days. I think that's what he's saying in terms of the thought exercise for imagining the scope of this exploit. Uh, but 44 days worth of extra mining. And he says the extra Raven appeared to have been sold into the market shortly after minting. So the economic damage is done. These bad actors essentially got away with the exploit. So this slow hacked exploit that I mentioned, it was a long game and they had a plan. They had a game plan for the moment that this exploit was successful, confirmed successful on their end. And they began to tumble those coins via exchange and get their hands on other assets to be able to wash it. Now, this makes the case for custodial services and that kills me to say it, it makes the case for custodial services because now the only recourse that the team has is through the legal system, right? Working with law enforcement to try to track down these individuals and then working within trackable coin networks and exchanges that may know something about 
these actors. So, on the one hand, this, this whole thing may be easier for the Ravencoin team to track using KYC exchanges if indeed the hackers themselves used KYC exchanges and if there was enough liquidity on those exchanges to wash 44 solid days worth of 100% block reward. So think about that. Almost double the coin base for 44 days worth uh, with half of that going to, to the new attackers or 44 full days of mining. Whew. Um, says it's already been absorbed by the Raven coin ecosystem as it stands. The Raven will continue to exist and that new total Raven number will be 21 billion plus the exploit of minted Raven. So the Raven coin network is irrevocably increased in terms of the total emission of coins. That is apparently irreversible. And I think that's what Tron is saying in other words. It says another option for adapting to the excess issuance is shifting the halving 44 days sooner, which would offset the minted Raven and put the total issuance back to 21 billion should the community and miners consider this a better option. Uh, one thing that I really admire about the Ravencoin team is that they are very open to community feedback. So are you interested in Raven? Is this something that you mine or something that you hold? You better be vocal about this because it affects you very directly. He says, we're choosing not to publish the exact details of the vulnerability until the fix is distributed and the Ravencoin blockchain is stabilized. It's our intention to first release details of the fix to developers that have forked Ravencoin code. And then shortly thereafter, we will publish complete information about the exploit. So clearly this would include Rito coin. Clearly this would include Raptorium and similar projects uh, who I know are, are also kind of part of the constellation of open source contributors and developers to projects like Zelcor uh, and others. So uh, Big Piggy, obviously, uh, who we had on the channel here not that long ago with the Raptorium project. I'm sure you're already aware, of course, this probably hit your, your desk well before it went public. But, uh, but reach out to any of those projects if you're involved in them, those project leads if you're involved in them, to get their take on what the plan is moving forward. He says, as you can imagine, this is difficult and embarrassing for the Ravencoin team. Well, of course, of course, uh, but I, I can only speak for myself. I don't blame the Ravencoin team. These are exploits that take a long time to execute. These are, and, and again, they start with confidence in building up some degree of goodwill and fooling everybody else into believing that the code is safe. Uh, this is why audits are so important. This is why reputation matters so much in this space. Uh, you may have heard me say it before on the channel for, for listeners and, uh, and for audience members of the channel that code is not law. Code is just speech. That's all it is. So if people are known to lie and deceive elsewhere, you should be very cautious about code of theirs that you adopt. Um, so hmm. he says, there are hundreds of tests that automatically run every time new code is submitted, but this critical flaw was not caught. The team understands this incident's impact as trust is such a critical element of the space. I could not agree more. He says a full report of how this happened and what steps will be taken to prevent something like this from happening again will be released as soon as the network is stabilized. And I totally admire the responsible disclosure of this, this problem as it affects coin holders specifically, not so much asset holders, but coin holders, the responsible disclosure first thing is such an important thing. Thank you for the, uh, the tremendously responsible, uh, not only optics of that, but, but ethics of just telling people. Um, so again, Ravencoin team, um, I applaud you for doing this and Tron, obviously this, you're, you're a real pro. This, this makes it, this makes it obvious for anybody that doesn't already know, pay attention to this. This is what, professional responsible disclosure looks like uh, to everybody else in the industry. Uh, take note and do likewise. This is, this is tremendous. Um, he says there's no mechanism to notify every, everyone at once. Well, Hey, I'm a part of, uh, of the alarm network. Uh, the rest of us can all be vocal. If you know somebody who's into Ravencoin, of course, tell them, tag them on Twitter, talk to them privately. If you have to, if you're in the Ravencoin discord, uh, discord server, then pay attention to the updates there. If you're not, in the Ravencoin Discord server, and you're interested in what's going on with Ravencoin, then go join it. There should be links to that as well in the article below. And he says that uh, he, Tron says that he will be just as as vocal and as uh, as straightforward as possible as information becomes available, and as the network stabilizes and there's real info. Uh, 
that's worth worth telling. So appreciate that as well. Um, he's asking specifically that minimize that for for members of the community to minimize transactions until network stability is reached and recommended, um, or reached rather. So network stability is the major imperative at this moment. It is the the moral imperative. Anybody who's involved, uh, definitely, if anybody who's watching this video is operating any kind of an exchange, then you know, <laughs> please pause your wash trading bots. I'm sure that the Ravencoin team knows exactly. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're painfully aware of which exchanges are actively engaged in some form of wash trading. So they'll be able to do that more effectively than I can. But this has been a, a not so quick update and a bit of a, a preview of Scambuster Saturday. Exploits like this can happen. They happen in confidence, actually, not in secret. They happen in the open and they can happen to less funded projects and less well-governed projects just as easily, if not much more easily than a high profile project like Ravencoin or as high profile a project as Ravencoin is. So um, we, it costs us constant vigilance. Thank you so much for watching to this point in the video. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face and I will see you in the next one.